growing fears among doctors of a second peak of coronavirus infections as the lockdown restrictions are eased in England. We've been speaking to staff at one of the hospitals worst affected by the pandemic in the UK. It's the Royal London in East London, which serves the densely populated area of Tower Hamlets. Hundreds of people have died there, with people from ethnic minority backgrounds particularly affected. Medical staff say a rise in cases is now inevitable as more people have contact with each other. And they've also spoken of the mental and physical burden of the past few months. Well, the latest figures for the UK are that 134 deaths were recorded in the last 24-hour period, but there were none reported in Northern Ireland. And that brings the total number of deaths across the UK to 37,048. My colleague Clive Myrie has spent a week at the Royal London Hospital, and this is the first of his extended reports. It's in times of crisis we find out who we really are. I've felt broken on many occasions, and I think a lot of my colleagues have. When souls are laid bare. In this time of coronavirus, one hospital and one community reflect on these troubled times, coming up for air to reveal their souls to us. <laughs> We saw the fragility of life. This guy's not going to survive the night. Yeah. We'll have to call the family. We're going to take out your tube now. We saw its strength. Marathon. Well done. <laughs> How's that feel? Yeah? And all the while, one fear looms, another peak of infections to rival the first. We were 20 beds away from being overrun. Don't be fooled by the gentle pace. Time is twisted here. On the Royal London Hospital's coronavirus wards, while many patients inhabit ventilated worlds of slow motion dreams and hallucinations, the doctors and nurses charged with bringing them back to life inhabit the real world where time moves too quickly as this cruel disease eats away at human lungs with frightening speed. Can we just do a couple more suctions? But the medical staff, including consultant PJ Zolfagari, have their own nightmares. On the back foot again. Are you expecting a second wave? Yes, I mean, I have to say yes, because I think once the lockdown uh, is, is relaxed, people, of course, are going to have more contact with each other. So that's the way this is going to spread. But if the lockdown completely disappears, then I suspect that the cases will just rapidly rise again. You know, we've learned a lot during this uh, last few weeks or last couple of months. Not perfect, but, you know, I think we will be, we're better placed for it now. Then, as our interview ends, he's called away. I'll be two minutes. His two minutes turn into several agonizing hours. You see you're working hard to ventilate, aren't you? We had permission from all the patients or their families to film. Do we have any more attitude? And Krishna Pillai Yogan's vital signs have worsened. Yeah. He's just 55. He's going to cause a bit of a problem yeah. here. And again, yeah, yeah. Go, 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 go. The professionalism of the team is stunning. Years of experience are gathered around this bed. As the duality of time, the drifting, oblivious patient, and the rush to save his life merge into a tableau for our times. Yeah. Okay, this doesn't look good. How concerned are you? Uh, I'm extremely concerned about this chap, especially at this late stage as well, that he's developed further uh, complications. So, there's a final roll of the dice. So you guys lift him up, I'll push the pillows down, yeah? Ready? This is a last resort. Maybe by turning him onto his front, they can force air into his lungs, oxygen into his body. It's all they can do. Yeah, okay, ready, steady, go. His lungs are just getting worse and more inflamed again. And you've been preparing to talk to his family? Yes, that's right. So just to let you know, have you called the family yet? Sister Becky Smith, a presence on the COVID ward for absent relatives. Okay. Their eyes and ears. 
potentially we'll make a decision about whether it's appropriate to continue with what we're doing at the moment or whether we should give him a bit of dignity. Imagine this stress for the team multiplied every day for weeks. Now you understand what the peak of the pandemic was like. You all right? Face is all marked. Well, you've just come off shift. Mm. Sister Carleen Kelly bore witness to those dark days. I've felt broken on many occasion, and I think a lot of my colleagues have. Um, it consumes you. It's what you think about when you go to bed. It's what you wake up. Um, you're preparing for your next shift. You're relieved that your the previous shift is over. You're sad. It's it's huge. It's a huge emotional burden. Um, I mean, it's it's a time of our lives that we'll never ever forget. No, my in my pocket. The peak almost yeah, broke yeah, minds, and um, according to consultant Nick Bunker, yeah. almost broke the Royal London. In normal times, we manage about 44 patients. At the peak, we were managing just shy of 90 patients. Um, so and that almost double. Almost, almost double. We were 20 beds away from being overrun. We were keeping people alive. That's what our, uh, that, that's what our goal of care was. Keep as many people as alive for as long as we can until we can get back to mm. being able to deliver the quality of care that we always aspire to deliver. Sometimes it's hard to find light in the darkness. But you're about to witness what medicine can do. I'm going to take out your tube now. This is one of the defining moments in an intensive care unit. Give me a big cough, big cough. That's it. That's it. When a patient's ventilator tube is removed, it's a procedure full of expectation and dread. And we'll pull out the tube as we do that, okay? Will it work? He's grimacing as the tube inches up his throat. <sighs> and finally leaves his chest. Everything's okay. You're at the Royal London Hospital. The heavy breathing of a man given a second chance. It's a victory for, for everyone and a morale boost for everyone as well. Now, as I said, he's still not afterwards, but uh, at least he's doing good, and we're very, very pleased to where he's got to now.